This podcast is part of a series called Voices for Change, initiated by Ecosia Cook for its 30 years anniversary. In each episode, a voice of an expert or key actor in a domain related to Ecosia's actions and commitments shares its vision and invites us to change ours. All of them are generous advocates of ways and actions that can lead to a sustainable world. In front of the complexity of the task, they share with us some reassuring landmarks, tools, and experiences, and we hope that their voices will resonate with you. The Dr. David Amudavi is Kenyan. He is head of the BioVision Foundation's African branch, which is in charge of setting up different programs in order to alleviate poverty and improve the livelihoods of smallholder farmers in Kenya and other African countries. He explains with insight and insights the challenges of local, regional and interstate disparity, the need for collaboration and training in order to understand how and why organic is one of the best solutions today for tomorrow. Welcome, David Emudevi. Um, we are really thrilled to hear you today. And we are going to talk about um, sustainable agriculture in Africa. And we we're going to try to answer this question, how to reach sustainable agriculture-based value chains, food and non-food, in Africa. But first of all, can you present your professional career in three key moments, precising how and when you met organic agriculture? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you invite me. My name is uh, Dr. David Amudavi. I'm the executive director of BioVision Africa Trust, based in Nairobi in Kenya. Uh, it's over 12 years ago since I got into beginning this organization from the scratch to support the development of true, sustainable and agriculture and food systems uh, in Africa. We run a program that uh, is geared towards passing information and knowledge on organic practices to farmers in largely in Kenya, but also in Tanzania and partly in Uganda. And I also coordinate a program on ecological organic agriculture for the whole of for the African continent. And this has been since 2011 uh, this year. So we are very happy to see that we are working on various measures and efforts that are geared towards uh, promoting and uh, developing the ecological organic agriculture sector, which is much broader and including organic agriculture. Perfect. You're Kenyan, but as the director of BioVision Africa Trust, you have a broad vision of the food systems on the whole Africa continent. Can you draw us a broad geographical picture on the question of accessibility to food in Africa and more generally of the main challenges that faces the continent regarding food systems? Thank you. The program or initiative that I coordinate in Africa is referred to as Ecological Organic Agriculture. And this initiative is supported by the African Union, which is basically the governance uh, summit of the African heads of states and government. And they passed a decision to support the organic sector in 2011. And that is also the year that we started discussing on how that decision can be implemented. And several non-government organizations, and particularly the national organic agricultural movements from around six countries, uh, came together in Nairobi with the support of the African Union to develop the concept and later on the strategic plan on how to develop the Ecological Organic Agriculture Initiative to address issues of healthy production of food to ensure food security on the continent and also to improve practices that are geared towards ensuring that we have a healthy environment. And we've come up with a vision of ensuring that we have a healthy continent uh, with healthy people living in a healthy environment. And one of the major issues we are addressing is how to get knowledge and information on what has been scientifically proven and what has also been shown to work in practice 
in supporting ecological organic agriculture and more so towards ensuring the element of food and nutrition security. At the moment, we are work having the initiative officially in nine countries in Africa, uh, five in Eastern Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and Rwanda, and four countries from West Africa, uh, Benin, Mali, Senegal, and Nigeria. But I'm glad to say more countries in West Africa, with the support of ECOWAS, are also part of this uh, continental initiative. We have lately also had another continental initiative supporting organic agriculture, and that is the Knowledge Center for Organic Agriculture in Africa, supported by the German government through GRZ, and this is in all the five political regions of Africa. My organization is responsible for this initiative within East Africa, covering Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and very shortly we are including Ethiopia and Madagascar. So these initiatives are very broadly geared towards ensuring that we have healthy uh, production of food and ensuring that it is safe and because we believe in a strong link between human nutrition and health. And that is why the question of ensuring that we have organic agriculture and in a more broader sense, ecological organic agriculture is promoted on this continent. Of course, it is a huge challenge because the sector is still limited in terms of funding which has to go into research and also into development activities to enable the promotion and the dissemination of knowledge practices along certain definite value chains. And this is one challenge that I believe with the African governments coming on board, with development partners also coming on board, and being part of what we have called a coalition of international partners, we can have more input into how to develop value chains within the organic sector. And to ensure we have increased production, we have increased processing and marketing functions, and also linking the producers to markets. And we'd like also to take advantage of the increasing demand for more nutritious food. And organic agriculture has been proven to be a major sector that can contribute to truly nutritious and safe food for people, not only on this continent, but also globally. We know very well, lots of non-communicable diseases are spread because people are not feeding nutritious, they're not eating nutritious food. And this is something that has been shown and we are therefore focusing on how do we get systems adapt more environmentally friendly systems of production. And ecological organic agriculture, and more specifically for organic agriculture, where we can also go to the level of certification to ensure that standards and the procedures of producing organically are followed. And this is where we find lots of efforts working with over 35 partners in Africa looking into the question of how to promote ecological, organic agriculture on the continent. And we are also motivating research institutions, development institutions, public institutions, and even the private sector to work with farm organizations and individual farmers towards producing organic products. Thank you. Um, to what extent, according to you, does Organic agriculture constitutes a solution to current issues of food system in Kenya and in other African countries. You mentioned different practices, but what kind of practices? Thank you very much. Organic agriculture is one of the practices we consider broadly under ecological organic agriculture. We also have other practices. Um, one important area which people tend to neglect, and it's a very good example of ecological organic agriculture, is intensive agroforestry, where we look at fodder crops, we look at tree crops, we look at livestock being integrated, and this is really very key for us. We also look at issues of practices that people tend to neglect, but for example, mixed cropping, cover crops, use of green, green crops, and with the legumes being integrated into cereal production. These are crops that we really put value on, and more so if we focus on legumes that have a high level of nitrogen fixation, which is important to soil health. And of course, we know soil health is an important function that is critical 
to ensuring increased uh, production. So in Kenya, we are looking at all possible array of practices, organic agriculture, bio-intensive agriculture, mulching, green crops where we use uh, the legumes being integrated into cereals and maize is an important cereal crop for in Kenya and also in most of the East African countries. It's also very important in other African countries, in West Africa, the same. And we look at which practices can we integrate into what people are very much familiar with in terms of their food uh, production. So these are some of the practices around which we are also looking at what innovations, what new ideas, what new mixing arrangements can we use to optimize production and yields. And we realize this is very possible again if we can have very organized and systematic research looking into the question of how do we optimize the potential of these systems to increase yield but also to enable production to be sustained in our long term. Because we believe with such practices, we can contribute to more stable, fertile soils. We can also integrate more with the livestock that is very important in contributing to question of soil health. And of course, when we include livestock, we are also looking at the products that have to come from livestock in addition to products that have to come from ecological organic agriculture in terms of crops. So the question of having to optimize production in crops and also production in livestock, in systems that care a lot about our soils, in systems that care about our environment, and in systems that care about the benefits we can realize from this for a long term is part of what drives us in our motivation to support organic agriculture. And we are also looking at this in terms of increasing production in that direction, not only for families at consumption level, but also to have families produce more than can be utilized at household level and get some to market as well. Over 80% of food needs in Kenya and in as much as other African countries are met by small-scale farmers. And this is why it is important for us to focus on small-scale farmers and more so looking at organic agricultural practices that can help improve production, improve productivity, and on a more sustained scale. This cannot happen by leaving the farmers on their own, but also working with other people within the value chains that the farmers are involved in. That was the question I wanted to ask you, because you need to convince the farmers to adopt organic farming. And doing that, you need maybe evidences, you need uh, scientific proofs. Uh, how and what are the main breaks of the development of our organic farming and consequently the main leverages and drivers that can convince farmers to adopt organic farming? Well, already the question of evidence I'm very glad to report is already coming up. We have had actual work done in Kenya, work done in Ghana, work done in India and Bolivia by research institutions. Um, FIBO, which is an, organi an organic research institution based in Switzerland, working together with partners here in Kenya, including our own research institute that we call Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, looking at system comparison trials on systems that have looked at low organic production and high organic production compared to conventional systems of low and high intensive production. And this has involved in the systems of maize, which is a very common cereal crop in Kenya. And results that have been done over about 12 years have clearly shown if we go for high level organic input production, we achieve the same yields as good as from conventional systems where people use lots of fertilized, chemical fertilizers and pesticides. But then we have the other benefits of ensuring that the soils are fertile and sustained for a long time. This is evidence that has been shown on station and also with selected farmers. And we have these farmers on the ground and who can actually provide the success stories that can show. Evidence is there in terms of research that has been done following very clear systematic scientific procedures. And also 
the evidence is there on the ground for farmers who have been part of this research work to show that organic agriculture, if well done, can actually be an alternative to ensuring that we have increased production. We have also increased productivity, that is how much we can get from our unit area, and also to look at how this can be sustained for a long time. This is the evidence that has been provided and we are also synthesizing it to put it into a language that can be understood by even the decision makers, those are the policy makers, and also putting the success stories in terms of formats with even videos to show other farmers, look, this is what can work if we can go organic. And already we have started working on a dissemination strategy on how we can reach farmers to show with the success cases that we are observing, how they can also be motivated and see that that is the direction to go. And also putting this to scientific researchers, other researchers as well, even the conventional scientists, to look at we can improve our research in organic the sector to improve productivity. The question is, for many years, development partners and donors have invested very heavily in conventional or industrial agriculture, not only in Kenya, but also on this continent. But the question of addressing food security still remains. You are aware, just from 2019 to now, it is projected that the number of people who still go hungry, even in spite of the heavy investment, is over 8 million and the number keeps growing. So if we continue pumping a lot of resources into conventional chemical-based agriculture, but the question of food security still is around with us, don't we feel it is time to look at what are the alternatives that can help us not only improve production, but diversify that production? And when we diversify that production, we smoothen consumption. We ensure that people have access to food that is adequate, nutritious, and available to them. And organic agriculture, which is characterized by diversification of enterprises, seems to be, to me, and to many other people who believe in truly sustainable food systems, the way to go. It requires drivers in terms of commitment by institutions to invest in the research, commitment to invest in building the capacity of farmers for the uptake of technologies and practices that are developed to support organic agriculture. It also it means investing in systems that can ensure that value chains add value to the products that are produced. It also means looking at market institutions which should be able to provide a stimulus, a motivation for farmers to produce, not only for consumption, but also for markets. And overall, this should be able to increase trade in the organic products at domestic level and this transition towards even global level. So it is time the global world, the development agencies, put a bit of more resources into research and develop work, development work towards the organic sector. Let's see the model, how it works in the next five to 10 years. Then we can compare what have been the returns to investments compared to the returns to investments that have been put into conventional and industrial agriculture that is very heavily chemical-based, but also with huge consequences to our environment as we know today. Thank you. That was really interesting. Maybe you could share with us one or two projects or initiatives that inspire you or give you the hope in a sustainable agriculture in Kenya or other African countries so that we can uh, picture what you are waiting for and uh, what you are hoping for. Thank you very much. And I, I won't go very far. As I've said already, the Ecological Organic Agriculture Project, which was founded in 2011 and that took off after pilot in 2012, has become a very good example. And this is in the nine countries that I've mentioned. Kenya and East Africa is one of those countries. And this is a project that is designed along research and applied knowledge where we are working with the research institutions, with the universities, and looking at what information is already available to share with the institutions that can promote this to farmers. And also looking at research areas that need further uh, investigation. Within this project, we have also developed a very strong uh, unit for information and communication, which is important not only for dissemination to the farmers, but also creating awareness. Yeah, in this country, during the World Food Safety Day, we had a huge media coverage on this project and what we are doing together with the latest project, the Knowledge Center for Organic Agriculture in Africa. And we really sensitized people 
on why it's important for people to change their consumption patterns towards demanding or asking for food that has been produced organically. And I can tell you, the feedback we've received has really inspired us. And people are asking them, where are the organic products? Which markets are providing this? And this is really picking up quite well. And I'm very happy to see that with more uh, consumer education, consumer awareness, the moment we are able to have people think very carefully about what they are consuming, how it is being produced, and where it is being produced, this produces a stimulus to the producers, to the organic producers, to produce more. For this project, I'm very much inspired, and we are going to see more farmers feeling this is the direction to go. And we are going to see more partners, more institutions, feeling that it is time to also look into organic agriculture a bit more deeply. From a research perspective, from an information and communication perspective, from a marketing development perspective, and also linking with the trade as well. We are changing the notion that organic agriculture, and more so if it is to the level that has been certified, it's only for the middle class, the well-off people. We are changing that thinking to where we say it should be a human right for every person, for every human being to demand to eat food that is healthy and nutritious. And it shouldn't be only a province for those who can afford or for those who are better off. Even the producers themselves, they need to feel it is their right for their own nutrition and health to feed on what they are produced organically, but not to produce and only think of certain niche markets for this. This is something that I'm very excited about, and I'm very happy to see that we are having more and more people, even those who are producing, realize it is actually the right thing to do to produce organically, to consume, and also, where possible, size permitting to produce for markets and for more people as well. So this is a project in our nine countries, five in Eastern Africa and five in Western Africa. We are seeing providing more cases of evidence on what is possible, what is working for our producers, for our consumers, and for our markets. And at the end of the day, for the producers, they need to produce for their own consumption. They also need to produce for what they can sell, get an income to meet other needs as well, and more importantly, to improve their livelihoods and health in general. And I believe these projects and others that are, would be coming up will be major drivers in influencing the direction where we should have a bit of more investments from our public institutions, but also from our development uh, partners. Thank you very much, David Emudevi. And maybe one last question to put in a nutshell. According to you, what's the main reason for uh, reaching a sustainable uh, agriculture in Africa, in Kenya, but uh, all around the world? And what can in, people can do individually to take part in this um, challenge? Very good. I think you raise an important question where every individual needs to question himself or herself. What am I eating? How is it influencing or affecting my health? And I can assure you, if people start reflecting very seriously, and also if people start getting information of evidence on how what is not healthy and nutritious and how it is affecting the health of others, people will start thinking differently and will also start demanding on what should be changed in what is produced from the farm to the table. So in my view, consumers are very key and consumers are drivers of the markets, they are drivers of producers because producers and markets target consumers. So for every individual, the moment people start looking at and examining what they are consuming, and how what they are consuming is produced, what goes into that production, that is the time we can start seeing a major shift in people making the demand for organic products. Organic products, organic produce should not be seen as a classic entitlement, but it should be seen as a human right for better health and for sustainable 
livelihoods. And with that push from consumers, certainly this will also have an influence on the mindset and practices of the producers who are the farmers. This is also likely to have an influence on those that provide the enabling environment in terms of institutions and in terms of policy. And here we are looking at public institutions, we are looking at governments. And this will also have an influence to those institutions and agencies that support the development of the agricultural sector in general. They'll begin to start feeling the need to have a greater focus on how do we achieve truly sustainable and healthy agriculture and food systems. All these are interlinked and webbed together. But in my view, I believe the greatest driver and that is where we need a lot of efforts for greater sensitization and awareness. It is in the consumers. Thank you very much, David Emudevi. You were really perfect. And uh, it's uh, crystal clear for now for us to see the situation now. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I just want to use this time for a minute to say we are very grateful to our development partners that are supporting the work we are doing in Africa, the Swiss government through the Swiss Development Agency for Cooperation and Development. We are also very grateful to the German government through GRZ for supporting the latest project. We are also very grateful to the Swedish government through the Swedish Society for Nature Conservation and very importantly to the African Union Commission, which has picked up these two important global initiatives in Africa as alternatives that can help develop truly sustainable agriculture and food systems in the continent. We look forward to working with other partners in this endeavor, and we look forward to making our world a better place to live in as we move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. EcoCert would like to thank David Amudevi for having taken part in the celebration of its 30th anniversary. In the next episodes, we will talk about terrestrial and marine biodiversity, try to clarify all the issues of life's protection, establish the not-so-obvious link between organic farming and women's empowerment, try to understand how the UN SDGs can inspire companies' CSR strategies, but also how standards lead sustainable development. We'll go to the heart of Europe, then from India to Africa. In short, 10 episodes to determine the best way to meet the challenges of climate change with famous experts. See you soon for a new episode.